During its lifetime, the Super Nintendo had an estimated 700 plus North American games released for it. And don't get me wrong, while it would be amazing to have a complete North American set, that just isn't within the realm of possibility for me. Enter the EverDrive. With this one card and a micro SD card, you can have the whole Super Nintendo library at your fingertips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the EverDrive, what you'll need, and even a feature I didn't know about until I had research for this topic. Let's go. Now I hear you asking, set it up, it's an EverDrive. And you're right, but there were some steps that I had to follow when I first got this to make sure that it worked correctly, and I want to make this tutorial as streamlined as possible. So let's go over the hardware you'll need. You're going to need an SD card, and depending on how many games you want to put on it, I would recommend the 64GB card. But I'm not planning on putting a lot of games on mine right now, and I have this extra 32GB card so I'm going to use it. It's pretty much all for the hardware. So now let's move over to the computer and download some software. Okay, now that we're over here on the computer, the first thing I'm gonna do just to make sure everything is organized, I'm going to create a folder on the desktop to put everything. I'll just name it SD to SNES. Now the first piece of software I would recommend would be a file extraction program, either WinRAR or 7-Zip. Either one of those two will be fine. I'm using 7-Zip because that's the one I have installed on my computer. The next thing you want to download is a program called FAT32 Format. The links to all these programs will be in the description below. So just click on the download button and then we're going to save it into the folder we created on the desktop. Next we need to actually download the firmware for the EverDrive. So you want to go to this website and then it's the top link right here. Just click download and download it into the folder we created. Now, this next step is completely optional. If you were to download just the firmware and put it on the SD card and pop it into your Super Nintendo, then this first square right here where my mouse cursor is would be the way the interface looks. I personally don't like this. So if you go to this website on Stone Age Game, there are several formats you can choose to change the theme. I'm gonna pick the SD to SNES Pro Retro Future and download it. But again, if you're happy with the way that this first square looks on your um, EverDrive, then that's fine, you can skip this step. But I'm going to download this Pro Retro Future file. Okay, this next step could also be considered optional as well. But with the newest firmware for this EverDrive, you're able to actually play Game Boy games and the DX Game Boy games that also work on the Game Boy Color on this EverDrive. So if you'd like to do that, then you will need to go to this website and then click on the GitHub link, scroll down to the bottom, and save the SGB02zip file into our folder. And that's it for software. Okay, with your SD card inserted into your computer, open the FAT32 format program. Once it's open, make sure that the drive letter matches your SD card and then you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine SD to SNES and hit start. The reason why you need this program is if you have an SD card that is over 32 gigabytes, Windows won't be able to format it correctly. So you'll need this program in order to format it. So I'm just going to go on and format mine just for demonstration purposes. Now, open up your SD card again go into our folder with all of our programs and extract the SD to SNES firmware. Once that's done, all you have to do is drag the SD to SNES folder onto the root of the SD card. Now, if you want to change the theme, you're going to want to open that folder up, look for a file that says m3nu.bin and delete it. Then take the m3nu.bin file in our folder on our desktop and drag it over to the SD card. And that's it. You change the theme. 
Now let's add some ROMs. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to tell you how to get ROMs, and I can't provide any. So get some Super Nintendo ROMs, and just drag them over to the root of the SD card. And if you want to take your SD card out, put it in the EverDrive, and pop it in your Super Nintendo and play, go right ahead. But if you'd like to add support for Game Boy games like I mentioned earlier, continue watching. Once you've downloaded the SGB02.zip extracted in our folder where we have all our other programs, these next two files I'm also not able to, to provide for you or, or tell you how to get them. So you have to do some sleuthing around on the internet to find them. But you need an SGB2 boot ROM and an SGB2 underscore boot dot bin file. You need those two files. Once you have those files, you want to rename the ROM to SGB2 underscore SNES dot BIN and save it. And if it asks if, you, if you're sure you want to change this file extension, say yes. Then you want to take both files and put them in the SD to SNES folder inside that folder on your SD card. And that's it. You've now added support for Game Boy games. And from my testing, this works on all Game Boy games. So you can load up a bunch of Super Nintendo ROMs and a bunch of Game Boy games and have them all in one place, which is pretty neat. Now that you've booted up your EverDrive, hit the X button on your controller. The first thing you want to do is go to in game settings and click that, and it's going to bring up this menu. The first option is start games with cheats. I don't use that, but I might, so I'm just going to go on and turn that on. And in order to make a selection, you hit up or down on the D-pad on your controller. The next option is reset to menu. You want to turn that on as well. Then you want to turn on in-game hooks. The hooks are button combinations that will take you back to the menu or reset the game or um, save and load save states. So you want to turn that on as well. And I will put the button combinations up on screen. The one chip transit fixes, it just ensures stability with all the special chip games that the Super Nintendo has. So you can turn that on or off, doesn't matter. The brightness limit doesn't apply to mine because uh, later models have an, an LED light built into them. And none of the games I use actually use a real time clock, so we don't have to worry about that as well. Once you've got everything configured, hit B, then go to the save state settings. If you want to use save states, turn it on. You're done with that. Hit B. Go to the Super CIC menu. This is another way to ensure that all of the special chip games work correctly. So you can turn that on as well. Hit B. Hit B again. Go back to the main menu. Okay. Now if you also loaded some Game Boy ROMs on here, all you have to do is click on those and they should play. So we'll try Pokemon Blue here. And there you go. You can play Pokemon Blue on your Super Nintendo. And along with these types of games, you can also play the DX games like I mentioned. So here's Link's Awakening DX. And it has all the features that the Super Game Boy has. 
the borders, the color palettes, everything. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple to get all this stuff loaded and you can enjoy hours and hours of classic Super Nintendo games. So that's pretty much it for me. Again, all the links to everything you'll need will be in the description below. I hope this tutorial helped. I know that I had trouble setting my EverDrive up when I first got it. I thought I could just pop the SD card in, put some ROMs on there, and I was good to go. But it didn't work that way. So if you liked this video, please leave a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work pretty well too. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a plethora of gaming-related content. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.